Good evening, everyone. My name is is Ichen, and today I'll be talking about something related to a miracle that's happened a century ago. Well, this miracle has saved millions across the globe. Yet many people has are in the modern times are not really talking or even thinking about this miracle that has happened. However, by 2050, it might be responsible for more deaths than cancer and diabetes combined. If we don't act soon, well, let's backtrack a little bit. Back to the year 1928, an entirely new era came upon the human race through an accidental discovery. Sir Alexander Fleming was studying Staphylococcus colonies, a type of bacteria that causes influenza, on culture plates, and he returned to the lab the next few days or so, only to find that a particular kind of mold has contaminated the culture plate. And, ladies and gentlemen, this. Is the f- this is the first discovery of the first antibiotic, penicillin, opening up the gates to the age of antibiotics. It has been 91 years since the discovery of the first antibiotic, and the science community has been discovering the use of more and more antibiotics. However, to understand our topic today, we need to dig into antibiotics a bit and know what they are. There are three main types of microorganisms that exist on our planet: fungi, bacteria, and viruses. These tiny organisms live across the planet and also inside other organisms like us humans. Some of them benefit us in our everyday life, yet some others negatively impact us by causing infectious diseases. Antibiotics biotics are chemicals produced naturally by fungi and bacteria that specifically targets infections and diseases caused specifically by bacteria. However, some people ask, then do antibiotics have a negative impact on the human body as it attacks bacteria cells? Would it attack human cells as well? Well, the answer is no. The thing is, the, ba- the structures of bacteria cells are actually very, very different from those of human cells. And different types of antibiotics tend to target three main traits in bacteria cells to accomplish their mission. One, the cell wall that surrounds the bacteria cell, so physically demolishing the bacteria cell. Two, the machinery that produces DNA and RNA, so to stop the multiplying of bacteria cells. Three, the machinery that produces proteins, so to slow down or even stop the metabolism of bacteria cells. These different methods of approach also mean that there are many different antibiotics out there that attack different bacteria. Up to now, antibiotics sounds like an amazing thing to be discovered by the human race, and I mean it is. Nevertheless, the start of the age of antibiotics might have triggered the end of the age of antibiotics, and this is all based on the reason of antibiotic resistance. As it sounds, antibiotic resistance is what some individual bacteria have developed over time through mutation or other ways, which enables them to be unaffected by the use of antibiotics. The, the, resist, the development of antibiotic resistance is actually a fascinating example of evolution. There are two main ways in which a bacteria can defend itself against antibiotics: intercepting the antibiotics outside the bacteria cell, or flushing the antibiotics out with the pump on its cell wall. The resistance can then be passed along the bacterial population through the multiplying or the passing of plasmids to other bacteria. As, as ex- explained before, antibiotic resistance develops through mutation. So the idea here is that the more frequent antibiotics are applied to fight bacterial infectious diseases, the bigger the chance that antibiotic resistance will develop within certain bacteria. Due to this phenomenon, we're currently seeing the rise of many superbugs that are resistant to, bacteri- to antibiotics. Antibiotics are the cornerstone to medical advancements. Without antibiotics, medical operations such as organ transplants, cancer treatment, basic and complex surgeries are not possible in the modern world. And with the development of antibiotic resistance, the human race might face such possibilities. The global community has identified multiple alarming and life-threatening cases of antibiotic resistance, and this includes the Klebsiella pneumoniae, which is a type of bacteria that, that is turned into superbacteria and can cause anything from pneumonia to major life-threatening diseases within the human body. In 2016, a case of such pan-drug-resistant bacteria was discovered in the USA. 
It is resistant to all 26 commonly available antibiotics and is one of the most critical threats to public health. There is MRSA, sounds quite familiar, which is actually the name of Staphylococcus aureus that turned into superbacteria. This kind of bacteria can cause anything from minor skin diseases to major life-threatening infections. Many such cases of antibiotic-resistant bacteria exist, and most of them are especially prevalent in hospitals. I'm sure many of you sitting here have been feeling a little bit uneasy in your seats. I mean, I sure was when I first read about antibiotic resistance some years ago. However, the world isn't going to end tomorrow, not from antibiotic resistance at least. So, what can we do against antibiotic resistance? To know exactly what we need to do, we need to first understand the reason behind the rise of these superbugs, and then we can tackle the problem at its roots. As mentioned before, the more frequent antibiotics are put into use, the bigger the chance for mutation to occur within, uh, within the bacterial population. However, in many developing countries, we are seeing common situations where antibiotics are prescribed too freely to any type of illnesses. Well, the healthcare system here in Germany prevents that from happening at a large scale. However, the fact is that this, this can actually happen in a lot of places. Unnecessary prescription can occur due to the lack of training for doctors, so doctors and pharmacists lack of knowledge in the area and who are not really qualified. Unawareness from patients. Many patients might be aware of antibiotics' positive impact on treating infections, yet not fully aware of its uses and functions. And there is the commercial production and the selling of antibiotics that occurs everywhere, even in more economically developed countries. However, antibiotics resistance does not only occur within the health industry, it also occurs within the agricultural industry. In order to maximize profits, companies raise their livestock in extremely poor conditions with tiny living spaces and bad sanitation. And to prevent the spread of illnesses and diseases among livestock, they are given extremely strong antibiotics in order to prevent this possibility. Consequently, antibiotic resistance is developed within the body of these livestock and then passed along the food chain to us humans. In the USA, 80% of all the antibiotics are distributed and feed it to these livestock. That is around the double of what is given to humans. Now that we understand the source of the problem, let's take a look at which we, the human race, can do to try and solve the issue at hand. One, law enforcement and government control. A major cause in the problem at our, on our hands is that a portion of doctors and pharmacists lack of knowledge in the field and their inability to identify symptoms of illnesses. And this can largely occur in clinics. Thus, with the right enforcement and a necessity study for qualifications of becoming a doctor, will be the first step for LEDCs or even MEDCs to control the antibiotic distribution. It is also suggested by the UN that, that countries should regulate their agriculture companies from feeding livestock with huge amounts of antibiotics and instead improve the living condition for these livestock. Two, apart from our doctors, we remain a major player in this situation. I'm sure many of you sitting here, or most of you sitting here, might know antibiotic resistance before this talk. However, many out there have no idea that antibiotics only counter bacteria with infectious diseases, and some of them might not even know antibiotics are. Hence, we must ensure education and the raising of awareness for all people and the harm they can give them to themselves and the people around them by taking antibiotics when it is unnecessary. People also need to know what they can do when they encounter illnesses. When you have a cold or irregular coughing, nobody should go straight ahead and take suffixum, which is actually just a treat to pneumonia or bronchitis. If you have a cold, please try some herbal medicine or a cup of lemon and honey tea. I promise that it helps. Three, bacteriophage. This term might be a little bit less familiar, but if you look at what they look like, you might know. Yes, bacteriophages are actually viruses that can be injected into the human body to treat bacterial infectious diseases, just like antibiotics, but with actually much fewer side effects. However, the research for bacteriophages are still going on, and that discussion will be for another time. I mean, right now, at this very moment, I'm sure that government and scientists are working on the solutions that I just talked about. However, I don't want you all to walk away thinking this is another one of the sciencey stuff that I cannot do much about. The fact is, you can. Hopefully, 
My talk has to introduce some of you guys to antibiotic resistance, and for those of you who already know before, clear things up a little bit. I just hope that the next time you have a cold, please remember to take some herbal medicine first or drink some lemon tea. But if you do ever do end up with antibiotics, remember to follow doctor's instructions and remember the things I just talked about today. And maybe even raise awareness on the topic like me. Thank you. <laughs>